Hi, I'm Michael Tracy. I'm the founder of the Livingston Paranormal Society here in Chillicothe. Have you investigated this building before? Yes, uh, a couple of times, actually. Yeah. Um, it's been a while, and we didn't catch a whole lot, but there are a few things. Um, mostly physical stuff was going on in here. Um, Upstairs? Yeah. Um, in fact, even in the room we're in, um, there was, um, most of it was actual physical sounds and that sort of thing. Um, nothing concrete though. It, I w it wasn't enough to call it haunted. But, uh, but the owner has reported um, things showing up in his camera at night, mostly orbs, but um, at the timing that it was that they were there, it's not likely orbs would have been there. Um, I'm not a fan of orbs myself. Um, I, my problem is orbs and dust look exactly alike. So that's why I use one of these. And I'm hoping other teams do too someday. And that's a 3D camera. And the reason why I like these for orbs is because um, if, if it's dust, it's going to be like this far from the camera. So if, if it's that close, it'll only show up in one lens and not the other. Or they'll be wildly different. So I'll be able to instantly tell that I'm looking at dust, which comes in handy. Yeah, I imagine. But, but the fact that something had to be kicking up dust at, at times when nobody was around that lends some possibility that it was more of the physical kind of stuff that we were running across here. I mean, it wasn't anything too major. It was just, like I said, bumps and noises that none of us made, you know. No but EVPs? No EVPs, no knocking. Now, see, my meter just um, went off just now, and it yeah. drained. So. That's the kind of thing wow. that we're running across. Okay. <laughs> it's just dead now. <laughs> Wasn't really expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in any case, things like that are happening, you know, generally happen mm -hmm. in, up here, but not enough to call it haunted. Mm -hmm. per just se. unexplained. Yeah, just weird. Um, there have been other places in town that we've run across things. Yeah. Um, like uh, right across the way over here at the, above the J.C. Penney building on the third floor, I believe, mm -hmm. we caught an actual orb, which um, we knew it was a real orb because it was before I had a 3D camera, but it, um, we knew it was a real orb because there was a reflection of it in the window that was on this side. Oh, wow. So, but that was a while back. I think that's on our on our Facebook page. I don't want to promote it or anything, but, <laughs> but... So what do people think orbs are? Uh, that's kind of up in the air. Some people don't buy orbs at all. Um, I'm very dubious about them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there could be real orbs. Um, in my personal opinion, I think orbs are more, if they are real, um, are more along the lines of uh, kind of like a severe thunderstorm watch. You know, conditions are favorable. <laughs> but uh, it just, ambient energy is what I would see it as. You know, energy that might be usable by a paranormal. But uh, some people think they are actual souls, you know, um, that they're looking at. And they love getting into all the little tiny details that are in the pictures. Um, to try to figure out what type of orb it is. There's different descriptions based on colors and, and patterns, and it gets pretty intricate. And I, I'm not knocking the people that, that do that. I mean, it sounds actually kind of fun to do that, but me personally, if I can't verify where it is in relation to the camera, it's not evidence to me. Mm. But. Anywho, um, another place was uh, above the, um, at the Essential Needs. We were there back when it was still a restaurant. And uh, 
we went upstairs and we got knocking up there and it interacted with me, which was really? kind of neat. Yeah, I always love it when they interact. But um, I did the shave and a haircut thing and it knocked, um, it knocked three times back instead of two, but yeah, that's okay. <laughs> and then I knocked three times back and then it knocked two times and then I knocked two times and then it knocked once and then it knocked once and it stopped. But hmm. all the people with me, their eyes were like circles. <laughs> but I, I kind of like it when that happens. I just got a stupid grin on my face. <laughs> but anywho, um, I'm trying to think if there's any other places. Have you been out to Slagle Cemetery? Yes, a few times. And we've run across a thing. I should mention that we've discovered that Slagle Cemetery is not public property, okay? Okay. Um, we were informed that by its owner, and I think everyone should take care to make note of that. Um, it is not a place where you can just wander around and do whatever you want, okay? Um, if you do want to go out there, try to do it through the proper channels. Try to get a hold of the owners and get permission to be there first, by all means. That being said, we did run across a little bit of a mystery we haven't quite figured out yet. Um, there is a girl that we've run across in two different cemeteries. I won't mention the other one. Um, for I, I just don't believe that um, people should go out to cemeteries randomly, you know, mm -hmm. at night anyway. Yeah. Um, so I like to protect them, I think. <laughs> but anyways, We've run across the same person in two different locations. And one of the locations was in Slagle, which I thought was kind of interesting. Not one of the people that are associated with Slagle directly, but um, we ran across the, the voice at first in the first cemetery, which isn't far away. <clears throat> And uh, and you hear one of us saying, I think her name is Amy, something or another. And then right after that, you hear what doesn't sound like English or is it, it's very hard to understand at first. You hear something, and then you hear Amy. And so it responded to us. And then um, again, we went to Slagle's and that same voice um, responded to me again telling me she was there and I think that's really interesting I'm not gonna it's a mystery to try to figure out why is she, I'm thinking it's possible that she feels that I have a maybe I have a way to get a hold of someone for her and that's why she's catching me at multiple places or it could just be she has connections to both places. It's hard to say. Mm. But it was interesting, though. It's the first time I've had that happen. Very interesting. Yeah. She doesn't follow me everywhere, thank goodness. Yeah. But, <laughs> Definitely. But, uh, another thing we've done is we've, even though the sim, uh, the, the uh, uh, prison has been torn down, the old prison, mm -hmm. we walked the area once, and we got an EVP out there, too. Really? Yeah. They apparently don't want any company wherever they're at because the EVP just said, why can't you just go home? <laughs> but, okay. but it was there. So that's pretty much a, what we've run across around here. And Slagles, we do get activity. Most of the, the things we've got were EVPs. Um, we've got questionable thermal hits, you know, they were off in the distance, that's why I say questionable. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, we got a lot of EVPs up there, um, mostly the old man going get out. But yeah, he's, he's not happy with us either. <laughs> but, um, any other questions? Well, what about some private residences? Have you done any at private residences, without going into any names or locations or anything, just... We've done a few. The most recent um, was one where the owner was a 
was concerned about their child. Um, their child was seeing someone she named, I can't remember the name off the top of my head now, but uh, we went out there and we, um, we did get some activity, not enough to be concerned about, um, not enough to suggest anything was, um, was hostile. The worst thing it did to them was it um, talked the child into coming outside so he could show it where he, show her where he was and he was and we went out there and we did get some activity out there you know meters going off and such but we didn't catch anything on thermal or anything out there but there was a little bit it's kind of like here a little bit of activity not enough to to say it's haunted, you know. Yeah. But that reassured her. That's what I'm there for. I mean, that's. I think it's more important to make sure the the person having the events happen understands what's going on and and knows what to do about it if and if there is activity. And if there isn't activity, they need to understand what's happening that's making them feel the way they do, mm -hmm. you know. And we had a lady one time that was, her husband had died a year before, and she was seeing him around in the, or, well, she wasn't seeing him directly. Um, she was in the bathroom and in her hallway, she saw a big bright blue light up here. And she was, um, feeling him around in, in the bedroom where she lays and and uh, she was clearly not over her. He died rather suddenly. It was a aneurysm mm -hmm. and it was pretty, you know, intense. And uh, so we went there and we checked it out. We caught minor things that um, I wouldn't even place a, um, I wouldn't even consider evidence at all. But what we did find was in both of the places where she had, she said she had the activity, mm -hmm. we found extremely high magnetic fields. This was a trailer, and so a lot of the wiring was unshielded. Mm -hmm. And um, it only takes like, a, um, like 20 milligauss for it to have an effect on sensitive people. You know, um, magnetic fields can cause headaches, um, um, feelings of dread, all the things that you would attribute to a ghost, um, magnetic fields can cause, um, even hallucinations. But, uh, and we think that might be what was actually happening. And she might have been just feeling that. Um, and again, in the bedroom, her clock was setting off like almost 250 milligauss. And in the hallway, the furnace was like around the same. It was up in the 200s. And that's more than enough to cause problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we kind of attributed it to that. But instead of just saying, oh, that's all it is, and leave, just leaving her be. She's clearly at a point where she's looking for some sort of closure with her husband, mm -hmm. you know. So what I did was I left her a few recorders, and I suggested that she leave them running and have a little chat with him, one-on-one um, -on -one with, with him. And she did that, and it was difficult to, to play it back for me. I mean... I mean, she was really opening up to him, and, and you know, it was very personal, but um, I think it helped her. I think she, it felt good for her to get all that out. Mm -hmm. And so, although I don't think the place was actually haunted, um, I think, I think I left her in better shape than she was, or I'd like to think I did. <laughs> it helped. But... That's what it's all about for me. I don't. If we don't get evidence, I don't see that as a failure. You know. Right. So, what's it show us some of your equipment? What it's for? Okay. Well, this one's dead now, but uh, 
um, this is a mel meter. Um, this but is one of the uh, REM pod mels. Um, it has uh, this antenna here um, creates an electromagnetic bubble, and then if anything comes into that bubble, it sets off a noise, which is what you guys might have heard right off the bat there. And so, what does Mel stand for? I don't know. Okay. Um, I know I, just the company that made it, I suppose. But um, it, this one, I, I love having these because this one can measure EMF fields. It has the REM pod built in, and it also has um, ambient temperature. And that's nice because um, you see a lot of people running around with temperature guns in, in these shows and such, but those aren't very useful because they only measure surface temperature. And uh, that can be useful for finding sources of drafts, but like in here, you would, everything would be the same temperature. You know, it wouldn't be very useful. But this, you can actually physically walk through a cold spot and figure out where its borders are, you know. Mm -hmm. So this comes in handy when it doesn't die. <laughs> um, this little fella here is one I made myself. It's, uh, as you can see, it's a proximity sensor, and it also has a magnetic field sensor as well. And I designed this myself mainly because I needed something that would uh, um, light up when when uh, we weren't in a room so that we could tell if there was activity if we needed to come back in there. We could see it on the camera. So, and it's worked pretty well so far. How sensitive is that? I mean, how close do you have to be to it? I, it depends on what's there. The intensity. Um, if it has a pretty good sized magnetic field, yeah. it can set it off, um, you know, three or four feet away. But if it's, uh, or if it gets in, if it's a, um, a contact sort of thing, it's only like maybe, maybe a foot. Um, as he saw, it didn't, it didn't really go off very far when I had my hand there. I mean, he had to be pretty close. See that? But, but when you touch it, it goes bananas. Yeah. And I'm just happy it works. <laughs> I'm never quite sure of my inventions until they actually turn on. And this is something everybody's familiar with by now. This is a K2 meter. This is one of the old school ones. This is originally I had to jam a, a dime in here to keep it on, but I eventually got a switch to solder in there to keep it so I can just keep it on that way because it's much easier that way. And the way this works is well the higher the higher you get on this meter and I don't know if you can see but it was actually lighting up there but I think that was me yeah but the higher this lights up the higher the magnetic field is and so these are these are all just tools to tell you that um, you're in the right room pretty much <laughs> that's pretty much the, the gist of it and again, there's the 3D camera. And I have other cameras as well. Um, I have a thermal camera. Um, my phone, I actually specifically bought a phone so that has a built-in thermal, which, which comes in handy in places like this. Here, let me see if I can point it at me. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's it comes in handy when I'm in a pinch. I, I can use this, the one on here. It's not as good as my 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 big thermal, but um, this will if I'm on a tour of a place, you know, it's a lot less bulky and I can record a video with it, which is nice. So that's a downloadable app. No, that came on this phone. No, this is built into the phone. Oh, this oh. is hardware. Okay. Um, there are apps that pretend to be thermals, but if you don't mind me standing up a second, I'll show you the difference. Let me run this again. Um, basically, okay, you can see the wall here, 
right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is the one thing, oh, I'm sorry, that uh, thermal can't, or I mean, those thermal apps can't do. Okay? See that? A thermal app can't do that. Only a real thermal can show uh -huh. you the heat left by a hammer. There you go. I've had a lot of fun with my ghost hunters on this kind of thing because I can go like, And then leave a room, and they'll walk in, and, <laughs> and I've written like healthy and stuff. <laughs> it's You're a cool man. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And all of a sudden, I'll hear them walk in. And they'll they'll be like, um, um. <laughs> it works a lot better on the big thermal, but it does work on this too. <laughs> you do IR. You have an IR. Yes, we have infrared and full spectrum cameras. Um, I have one camera that can switch between them, which is kind of nice, mm -hmm. and I rigged it so I took the flash LEDs out and put in L um, UV LEDs, which which makes it so I can keep, a, I can see in zero light with it. And uh, I did have another phone that could actually use LiDAR, but that phone broke, so... That was that was a bummer. So I need to replace that. I need what to is get lidar? Um, basically, it uses a laser to um, get the depth of everything, and um, you can use it to map a room. So I could literally go through a place and and you know point it everywhere in the room, and then go back home and put my VR glasses on and walk through the room again in VR. Oh wow! Um, and it comes in handy for for obvious reasons, you know, that would be one of them, but um, it also, um, if there was something else in the room, it might reflect off of it, and, and I might get an image of something that I can't see. And, and you never know what's going to work. A lot of tools that are meant for other things are usually adapted to, you know, paranormal research. Um, if you're thinking about doing this sort of thing on your own, you don't have, you know, the funds for all these fancy toys, a compass will give you the information you need, you know. Um, your phone has most of the tools that necessary to do ghost hunting. Um, your phone, most phones have a electromagnetic field meter. I mean, they're, it's not a meter, but it has a sensor for it. Um, most phones have a proximity sensor as well. And there's apps out there that take advantage of those things. There's a lot of phony ones, but there's a lot of real ones too. Um, some of the apps, my favorite apps that I use, um, I like the Spirit Light one because you can set it off by either EMF touch or both and basically it's just a um, calibrate sensor basically you can ask somebody to touch this and set to set it off and if there's a high EMF it'll light up or if there's a um, or something actually touches it it'll light up and that can be used for communication purposes if you've already discovered there's something going on you know there's a lot of there's a lot of apps like that some you pay for some you don't but um, I would advise um, discretion on on that you know because like I said there's a lot of funny ones and but what do you use for voice recordings um, I didn't bring any voice recorders with me but I have three little recorders that I like because I can monitor the recording with an earphone while I'm recording. So that way if I get an EVP, there's a good chance that I'll hear it right mm -hmm. away. And uh, I've always, I prefer that mainly because, um, well, I'm just worried that I'll get a um, situation where something's responding to me and trying to communicate and I won't hear it until it's too late to say something back. Yeah. And the, the opportunity to have a full conversation 
with a paranormal. It's just too good to pass up. <laughs> so your voice recorders are more sensitive. I mean, you, you, you run cameras pretty much most of the time, too. Yeah. Uh, but the voice recorders are more sensitive than the cameras, the mics on the cameras? Do you... Um, usually. I, I've had less luck with, uh, with camera mics than I have with recorders. Um, I don't recall any time that I've gotten evidence with, I mean, audio evidence with just a camera. Um, I've gotten video evidence with just cameras. Um, my, even with the, the non, uh, even with a regular digital camera, I've gotten evidence. Um, so, I mean, you don't need a fancy camera either. Um, that one cemetery we went to, um, we were only out there 28 minutes and all we brought were regular cameras and recorders. And we got five EVPs and in 28 minutes and all of our pictures were full of these weird squiggles. Wow. And they're pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, we're not sure what those were. Um, one little girl looked at them and just shrugged her shoulders and said, oh, those are fairies. She might be right for all we know. <laughs> I mean, that's as good a guess as any is. Who's, yeah, who's to say? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, th there's a lot of people that use other things that um, are more on the fringe of science, like, uh, like dowsing rods. Um, I have a member in my family, my mother tells me, that um, is a dowser. And um, he, she claims that he could tell if a, if a grave, if a person in a grave was male or female with, their, with his dowsing rods. And I think that if I would love to go with them on one and and attempt to confirm it, I I would love to see that. But I don't count on it personally, you know. But I don't tell people don't bring those, you know. Um, other things that people use to combat um, paranormals is smudge sticks. You see that a lot. And. Uh, me personally, I think will is your biggest weapon in, in paranormal um, encounters. And I think faith is too. Um, and as far as like the smudge sticks, if you believe it works, it probably will. You know, and, uh, and uh, if, like I tell my people, if you don't have any if you don't have any will and you don't have any faith, then you should not be out here hunting. <laughs> but what's the scariest thing you've come across? Um, that's difficult for me because it takes a lot to scare me. <laughs> um, but the strongest thing you've come across? Um, I'd say the scariest thing I ran across was when I was a little kid. It was what got me into it. Mm. Um, we had a house in Dubuque, Iowa that was just like totally next level. I mean, crazy things happening all the time in it. Um, sometimes it made Amityville look like Casper, <laughs> you know. But um, one night I was laying in bed and uh, my closet, the stairs were on the other side of the wall going down towards the basement. And uh, so it was like solid wood halfway up and then shelving. And normally, if you if you were open it up, that's where I mean you'd have to step back because that's where I throw all my stuff for mom's to clean my room. <laughs> but uh, um, one night it opened up by it, by itself, and there was only two things in there, and one was kind of a red cloth draped over the you know shelving there, and, and a skull sitting on it. And I um, proceeded to vacate the premises. <laughs> I ran up to mom's room and she's doing the, uh, I believe you believe you saw it kind of thing. And, uh, and finally she talked me into coming down there and we went down together and we smelled smoke and by the time we got to our room, um, the lamp had fallen on my bed and my bed was on fire. And uh, 
I was pretty sure I didn't turn a lamp on, but um, yeah, <laughs> that was that's one event. And I personally, I think there was two. Knowing what I know now, I think there was two paranormals in that place, and one was aggressive, and I think the other one was the one that scared me to get me out of there because they knew an attack was imminent, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and my sister every. My grandma visited there once, and she didn't want to come back because she said the hallway twisted on her. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it wasn't very um, pleasant to see because it was a really long one, like one of these. But, yeah. So that's probably the scariest thing I saw as a kid. Um, another time in that same house, I was in I was in a room, and the a light off on the on the bluff came like up to like an old like a crappy B movie <laughs> came flying up to the window and it was the shape of a skull and it kind of slowly blurred out and I just stood there <laughs> staring at it <laughs> until it finally went away and so did I <laughs> but those are probably the scariest things I, I've run across directly anyway. And instead of instead of trying to forget those ever happened, I had it had the opposite effect on me. I wanted to understand what it was so I didn't fear it anymore, you know. And so that's probably the whole um, reason I'm doing this now. And She my, that's my wife, sorry. Yeah. She's, she, she has this supernatural ability to call when, when at the worst possible moments. <laughs> um, I did want to ask you about the, the, the devil dog. I remember you told us the story before. Yeah, that's in Brunswick. Again, it's at a cemetery, and I strongly do not recommend going to cemeteries without at least um, getting permission from the local police um, in that area. It's it's really just going out there to mess around. It's it's disrespectful. It can cause you problems. You might pick up something that um, that might. I mean, there's things called luck storms where where you well, I call them luck storms yeah. where um, things follow you around and just really mess with your life, and it can. It sounds silly, but it can be really serious if it actually happens to you. And uh, you shouldn't um, just run out to a place like that. Anyways, in Brunswick, or not in the town north of it, there's a cemetery um, that has reports of, um, let's see, shadow figures, disembodied voices, um, a caretaker without a face, a, a black dog report. Um, in this particular case, um, the black dog um, blocked their exit and it sat there staring at them and I, I'm pretty sure they said the eyes glowed or at least reflected really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually it stood up and walked off the road like a person. Um, which sounds pretty incredible to me. There are um, there are cryptids or, or legends of beings that can do these things. One would be a shapeshifter, obviously, like a, like a skinwalker or that mm. sort of thing. Um, another would be, um, especially in cemeteries, you, you hear reports of dog boys. I don't take much credence in this because there really isn't enough information. Um, but if those things do exist, it's likely it's some other type of uh, paranormal entity that's you know having a little fun. Um, speaking of, there's also one that's um, Irish in origin, and it's called. This is going to make the uh, Pokemon people just happy as heck, but it's called a puka. <laughs> You've heard of that, and. Um, it is also a shapeshifter. It can. It usually takes a form of different animals: um, horse, uh, goat, 
um, wolf, you know, even a cow of her. Um, and it matches that description pretty well. And uh, it's one of the, it's it's a pretty old type of spirit. It's been around a long time. In fact, the word spook came from puka. But um, so there are things it could be. So I don't just blot it out if I if it sounds incredible. I'll, although in, historically speaking, the more incredible the stories are about a place. Um, the less likely it's got activity. It, it's I've noticed that. I don't, I'm waiting for some place to be spectacular reports, and then I get there and I'm like blown away. Well, not literally, but <laughs> but I'm hoping that'll something like that'll happen someday. But and it will sooner or later. I mean, you do this long enough, you're going to run across something. You know, mm -hmm. just I strongly recommend that you be prepared. I mean, a lot of people do this, and then they actually see something, and they're like, nope, I'm out. I'm like, well, why were you looking for it in the first place? I mean, you found what you were looking for, and now you want to leave. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But um, So if you're going to do that, you need to be honest with yourself about that. Um, and you want to make sure. Another thing is, if you've got any depression issues or anxiety issues, you probably shouldn't. You should, if it's something resolvable, you should resolve it before you do any of those things. Trying to think of anything else. Oh yeah, the, at that place, the that cemetery. There's also reports of <laughs> um, not only stones but trees and fences relocating. Over, um, over the course of time, and they're in different places when they come back. We did not experience this, but I did inform my team if anything did relocate, then the hunt ends right then and there. Because out of all the descriptions, that would be the most dangerous. Um, I personally want to go home in the same universe I got here in. <laughs> yes. Unless in that one I'm married to Jessica Alba or something. But. <laughs> Not likely, so. <laughs> but, anywho, that's all I can think of about that place. But we've there's been reports of other ghost hunters going there, and um, they've gotten EVPs that are sped up. They had to slow it down the audio to to play it back, and it was like kids singing "Ring Around the Rosie" and such. We didn't get anything like that when we went there. But we've only been there one time. Typically, I go to a place three times. There's a wear out your welcome kind of thing, you know? Yeah. But I would like to go back there sometime with the right team. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else around here. Um, we did have a house with a lot of activity up north of Purdy. Okay. Um, and the lady didn't want us coming back. We only went there once, but she was worried that we'd try to get rid of it. And I only do that if they ask me to. But I do recommend that they protect themselves, you know, for obvious reasons. This one was definitely a child ghost. Um, a rather powerful one. Um, we got there and we were seeing shadow play just walking in through the front porch. And uh, I was on the second floor landing and something whispered right next to me and went, Michael. And I got this grin on my face and I turned over and there was nothing down there. And my other team was in the garage because they had reports of shadow figures out there. And uh, yeah, I got all excited about that. So I. So I said out loud to, um, there's a, a gal on my team that's in the garage right now, and if, um, if you do that to her, she just loves it, and it'd be a great joke. She'd just jump right out of her skin, so could you please do that to her? And um, it didn't happen right away, but 
um, while we were all sitting in the living room, she was sitting on the steps in that same area, and all of a sudden she goes, oh, uh, I, I just got poked, and uh, someone just said my name. <laughs> <laughs> So that was pretty. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, we used a, we used the flashlight trick where you where you get one that has the button start and you can unscrew it so that it's like almost on but not quite and, uh, and then you can set it on a table and use it to get you some no questions if it lights up. You know, I it, we had some results with it, but. To me, that seems a little too random, you know. I prefer things that are a little bit more specific like mm -hmm. this, you know. Okay. <laughs> we're seeing some activity here. Yeah. But what I think we're looking at here is actually my phone working. It's just picking up some energy off your phone? Yeah. Phones generate mm -hmm. EMF fields. So if you're on a hunt, it's probably a better, better idea to, if you have one of these meters, it's probably a better idea to turn your phone off.